Hello, this is Asti and Pavan. We are two aid Bay Area volunteers who recently visited an aid-supported girls' education project run by the Trust for Reaching the Unreached in rural Gujarat. This is our account. The Trust for Reaching the Unreached, or True, is based out of Vadodara and Shivrajpur. In Vadodara, they run two subsidized diagnostic laboratory centers equipped to perform sonography, radiology, and pathology. Shivrajpur serves as True's base of operations to carry out their programs in education, women's empowerment, and community-based health, including mental health, in and around the Panchmahal's area. Shivrajpur is a small town situated 60 km east of Baroda and is surrounded by dense forests and manganese mines. Many of the tribal communities here are still dependent on these forests of teak, tendu and mahua for their sustenance and livelihood. Members of the Adivasi tribes known as the Ratwas and the Nayaks and those belonging to the backward caste called the Bariyas are also employed here as small farmers, landless labourers and seasonal migrant workers. Being a remote and hilly area, the Panchmahal suffers from a poor reach of most government facilities, including health. Apart from the old challenges of malnutrition and infectious diseases, newer diseases that used to be classified as urban lifestyle illnesses such as cardiovascular problems, hypertension and various mental illnesses are also on the rise. As is found elsewhere, women in these communities as well aren't considered equal to men. Women are expected to manage the household in addition to working the field. Very few women are in positions of power in the local government. And far fewer girls go to school compared to boys. 25 years ago, True began working in the Panchmahal's area to address some of these challenges. Let's take a look at their interventions. When True began working in this area, they noticed that very few girls from these villages actually attended high schools which are only present in distant towns like Shivrajpur. Instead of attending school, they are expected to augment family incomes by working along with their parents, or taking care of their siblings, or managing households while their parents are away. True addressed this problem by setting up a hostel facility for the girls in their 1.75 acre campus in Shivrajpur. It contains a girls hostel shown here on top, an outpatient clinic shown here at the bottom, number of classrooms, a library, guest and residential quarters, and a large kitchen and dining area. Besides these, it also has a large orchard of mango, jamun, chiku and amla trees and space for a kitchen garden and vermicompost. The hostel shown here on the left is adjacent to the government supported high school, the pink building shown here on the right. The hostel currently houses 102 girls attending grades 9 through 12. The proximity of the hostel to the school has many benefits. For one, the school now boasts of the highest number of enrolled girls in any school in the district. For another, the hostel girls now have the time to practice, participate and win in many extracurricular and cultural activities including essay writing, dancing, music and drawing competitions. The girls live here throughout the year except during summer and winter breaks. True charges a nominal registration fee for each girl of about 500 rupees per year given in cash or kind. Apart from arranging for boarding and lodging in the hostel, we also learned that True arranges for supplementary tuition in most of their school subjects as well as with vocational training in basic computer and tailoring skills. During our visit there, we met with their computer teacher who told us how the girls were learning how to type as well as basic word processing. The girls also help out with the management of the orchard and the kitchen garden. The vegetables grown in the kitchen gardens are used in the preparation of their meals. Sales of the fruits from the orchard raises additional income for the program. Teams of girls also work in rotation in the kitchen to help with the daily cooking. We got to see how they were making giant makainu rotlas or corn rotis, each of which is sufficient for three to four girls. The girls eat their meals in a large dining hall on campus. Each meal is preceded by a prayer about eating, playing and living together. The girls start their day early in the morning when we visited them by the time we woke up at 7.30 am, the girls had already finished with their morning ablutions. After this, they attend 2 hours of tuition, eat breakfast and attend school from 11 to 5. After school, they play games like kabaddi, kho kho, cricket and badminton. Then they eat dinner and do homework with the help of a teacher. We got to interact with the girls for an hour or so on one of the evenings of our visit. What struck me the most was the fact that the girls are incredibly shy too shy to even talk to us. After a significant amount of effort from Asti, they finally opened up to us with a number of questions. What do you eat in America? What is the air like up there? Can you show us photos of your workplace, of America, of your marriage? 
Interacting with these girls was our favorite moment of the trip. When I later learned that their extreme diffidence in front of strangers is typical of women and girls in the area, I finally understood the challenges faced by the true team in helping prepare these girls for the modern world. In this context, it was really refreshing to see the enthusiasm and curiosity of these girls. All in all, the hostel provides an environment safe from immediate social pressures and distractions, allowing the girls to focus on their studies. In 2013, of 33 girls who finished 10th standard, 29 went on to continue studying, while of 14 girls who graduated from high school, one has even gone on to do an advanced computer course in a nearby institute. True has also been focusing on improving community access to and the quality of primary health care in the Panchmahals. Although delivery of health care has certainly improved in the Panchmahals area over the last 25 years, there are still a number of significant challenges facing the people there today. Poverty and the lack of sanitation are two significant challenges leading to numerous health problems in the Panchmahals area. Disturbingly, the last few years has also seen an increase in the number of non-communicable diseases including cancer, diabetes, hypertension and respiratory illnesses. Women also bear an additional health cost of an already stressful life at the margins due in part to the lack of gender parity but also due to other social pressures. True has adopted a community-based approach to monitoring and providing health care to the rural communities in the Panchmahals area. This approach critically hinges on the participation of trained village health workers, each of whom are responsible for one or more villages under them. The village health workers individually survey each household in their villages for health problems including mental health problems of adults, pregnant women, lactating mothers, children and infants. They typically are the first on the scene to diagnose and treat the health problems of the community. They recommend medicines and dietary changes and also refer people to the true outpatient clinics. True operates outpatient clinics and dispensaries in four centers in the Panchmahals. These clinics are staffed by an attending physician and also avail the services of a consulting gynecologist, dentist and psychiatrists. Patients are seen on most days at the outpatient clinic, the True main campus in Shivrajpur. True's principal physician, Dr. Ashwin Patel, who is trained as a pediatrician but has over 40 years of experience in dermatology, gynecology, general medicine and psychiatry as well. Dr. Patel strongly believes in the practice of rational health care that is regular and affordable. Asti and I also visited the Bakrol center where an interesting incident happened. An old woman had come to the clinic to be seen by Dr. Patel. When she found out that Dr. Patel wasn't available that day, she left, refusing to be seen by the stand-in physician. Despite the fact that there is a primary health center nearby, the Bakrol clinic is well attended by patients from the neighboring villages. Patients with a wide variety of illnesses and complaints attend the clinic for checkups. This 1-year-old boy was suffering from diarrhea. But also just take a look at his mom. How thin she is. She is a recovering TB patient herself. We got to speak to the village health workers who had come to the Bakrol center for their weekly meeting with Ms. Nimitha Bhatt. The health workers discussed their week of activities, diagnoses and referrals with Nimi Ben. The care with which these health workers maintained their records was obvious to me after I took a look at the meticulously detailed notes in one such child weight monitoring record book. You might ask at this point, if there is a PHC nearby that is open every day, why don't the people from these villages go there instead of coming to the bi-weekly true clinic? In the answer to that question lies a sad but interesting tale. The PHC in Bakrol is housed in a clean and modern building, is well stocked with medicines and has separate examination, labor and general ward rooms. Yet, when we visited, we saw hardly two patients there that day. We found out from Dr. Patel later that there is a serious dearth of qualified and competent doctors in rural Gujarat. The Bakrol PHC itself is visited by a homeopathic doctor as the government couldn't find an allopathic doctor to fill the post. Besides this, True has built a rapport and trust with the community over many many years that the PHC is only slowly building up. It was great to see that despite the many challenges, True's community health program is still going very strong. The last agenda item of our site visit came about as Asti unexpectedly needed to do a bunch of blood and other lab tests for herself. We decided to get these done at one of the two diagnostic centers run by True in Varodhara. These centers are fully equipped to perform routine pathological, radiological, sonographic examinations as well as dental examinations. True began these subsidized centers in the early 90s as an alternative to the for-profit and expensive diagnostic centers that were proliferating then. True's success 
has resulted in multiple centers being started by private players in the city of Vadodara. True's experience has shown that subsidized centers like these are a viable alternative and are of immense benefit to people in need. All told, it was a wonderful site visit experience for both of us. We look forward to the next 25 years of more amazing work from True.